Today is the third Sunday of Advent. And if you notice right away in the color that we use, each rose or pink, even in the Advent wreath, you know, in the third candle that we light today. Because we are being reminded and also celebrating the very essence and the real and true spirit of the season, which is joy. That joy that is a gift of God that's rooted in the fact and the truth that what we are preparing and awaiting for is the Messiah, the Lord Jesus himself, be it in his nativity, which we celebrate in Christmas, or on the final day, on the final judgment that we are supposed to be uh, receiving that fullness of the glory of the Lord, that beatific vision, uh, being with him and share his glory for all eternity. Meanwhile, we are here on earth, and that's the, the thing, that's the challenge that we have to face to really have that joy in our hearts because it's not always that what we experience, what we live, what we see, what we feel, somehow we can say that they are really cause or causes of joy or to be joyful. And in fact, for example, we are so devoted to the divine mercy, right? And we pray always the chaplet. And yet in the chaplet, especially in the concluding part of that, it's referred to as optional prayer, but to me it's so powerful when we pray it. No? And I guess you can pray with me. That part, eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, Right? Big words, so powerful. And it continues. What's the next words? Huh? No. Eternal God in her mercy, endless, and the treasury of compassion, inexhaustible. Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Probably because, again, it's just optional, but to me, those are powerful words. You know, when we are praying the chaplet, why? Because that's the very reason why we find meaning in our trials and difficulties, and we are always grateful because of the great mercy of the Lord, and we never lose that joy, that interior joy in our hearts, knowing that no matter what, no matter whatever happens in our life, He would always be there for us, the Lord and God of mercy of us all. Amen? That's the truth. But sometimes, because of what we go through and experience in our lives, and we are so overwhelmed, then we do not see it and we sometimes take for granted and forget. Like, for example, in the readings, no? In the book of Isaiah, no? 
a promise no, of sharing the glory, the splendor of the Lord. And yet, in the context of what the Israelites went through that time, it's so hard and difficult for them because they were just coming from the Babylonian exile. They were suffering. They were down and out. They were miserable. It's like it's too good to be true to believe what the prophet said at that time. Or even St. James in the second reading, be patient for the coming of the Lord. That anxiety, especially if we see disappointments or things that are kind of causing us disappointments, frustrations. And we know, I do not have to enumerate to you the things that we go through these days. It's challenging. Sometimes the celebration that we have these days is just so superficial, shallow, just on the fun, the laughter, the pleasure, the entertainment, the fun of it, but devoid of real meaning of what's really the reason and the very reason, the very essence of the season. And it's Jesus Christ. It's like having Christmas, but Christless Christmas, which the call is to have a Christ-centered, Christ-filled Christmas. And again, some problems, be it personally, in the family, in our relationships, whether in marriage or with important people in our lives, or loss of a loved one, or a serious illness, or problems at work, or the things that are happening in the community, in the society, in the church, in the government, in the world. There's just so much negativities. We cannot deny all this. Even St. John the Baptist, the irony of it, no? that he was supposed to be preparing, you know, that big words, prepare the way of the Lord. And yet when he was in prison, together with his followers, so much so that he had to send two of his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one that we are waiting for? And that's the thing, no? Sometimes it's really difficult and we need a lot of grace to see the hand of God in all this, that greatness of his mercy and power. And there are times that we, not, we do not comprehend why all this are happening in our lives. And yet, when the Lord was being asked, he replied, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The poor have the good news to proclaim to them the works of the Lord, which actually manifestations of that great love and mercy of God for the salvation and his saving act and work for humanity, which actually, until now, the manifestations of the glory of the Lord in the lives of so many who come to know and experience His great mercy in their lives. And that's the truth. Sometimes we are just so negative and we lose and forget that after all, where they are a lot of blessings and we just have to count and see and experience and live them ourselves, recognizing with a grateful heart how good the Lord is in us. Amen? Amen. And that's the truth. That's the truth. And why? Because after all, we are his children, redeemed by the Lord. In fact, when the Lord gave a tribute 
that singular privilege that John has, he also said, and yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And who are we? We belong to that kingdom because the Lord in his mercy and love saved us on his sacrifice on the cross. We may be nobody, we can be the least, and yet we are more blessed than John because we have the Lord Jesus, our Savior. And right now, in this very Holy Eucharist, we offer ourselves, we put our trust because, again, we submit ourselves to His most holy will, which is love and mercy itself. And that's the greatness that we always have. Because we have the Lord, the divine mercy. So, merciful, compassionate, and loving. So, brothers and sisters, I cannot go on and on because I know that we do not have enough time, but may the message of the Lord in His Word and the grace of the Holy Eucharist strengthen us and inspire us that again, as we experience and live the joy of the Lord in our hearts, we share it to others. In fact, in the words of Saint or Pope Francis, the joy of the gospel. And we pray that we may become messengers of the joy of the Lord to others. Amen? A blessed Advent and eventually Christmas to everyone.